Advanced evasion techniques are just techniques that are engineered to avoid detection. So what a threat actor will do is they will take defensive technology and practice their attacks, their evasion techniques to make sure that they go undetected. In a sense, evasion techniques have been with us a long time. There's nothing new about them. They've always been there ever since we've had cybercrime and cybercriminals. So cybercrime and cybercriminals want to avoid detection. They don't want to get caught. So they use evasion techniques. What's new and novel about advanced evasion techniques is the level of sophistication we're now seeing in the techniques that are being used to avoid detection. The levels to which they'll go to to slip under the radar are significant. When we talk about AETs and APTs, what we're talking about with APTs is motivation. It's all about having a motivated threat actor, well-resourced, well-trained, motivated. The APTs want to break into your network. In breaking into your network, they're going to use a series of techniques. These techniques will range from publicly known, publicly available techniques to advanced evasion techniques, zero days and things like that. And they'll use a gambit of technologies to try and break into your system. So APTs, it's about motivation. AETs, it's about technology. If a threat actor was motivated to break into a network and was prepared to invest the time, effort and energy and they really wanted to break in, what they will do is they will develop a zero day. This is an exploit that has not been seen in the public domain, that we have no knowledge of. We therefore find it difficult to protect ourselves against zero day exploits. They'll use an evasion technique to avoid detection, taking the zero day, taking a malicious payload, that so could be a Trojan or a worm or something like that, embedding those within an evasion technique and then hitting us with it. So the evasion technique allows them to infiltrate our network to get past our sensors so we don't know that we have a worm, a Trojan, a malicious piece of software operating on our network. All networks, anything that's connected to the internet, effectively, the internet is a geographically borderless environment. It provides people from all over the world to reach out and touch you. So, anyone who's got any kind of internet connectivity, any kind of network connectivity, there is a potential there for an AET to be used against you. It comes down to having a collaborative approach. And that's just at one level doing simple housekeeping. So having a firewall, having antivirus, doing patch management. If you look at the conflict of virus, when the conflict of virus broke out, it was a vulnerability that we'd known for a number of years and yet it caused massive damage. Why? People hadn't done patch management. The other is having a collaborative approach with your vendors so that you're getting the best products and that vendors understand your requirements and therefore you're getting the best technology to protect yourself. They're changing the way we think. So what we're seeing with AETs is a mind shift. We're moving away from a model that says we understand our threat actors, we understand the threats, we can therefore mitigate them into a model where we say we're dealing with uncertainty. So our systems can be compromised. We have no way of knowing whether they've been compromised because of advanced evasion techniques. We can't see the intrusion. If the intrusion only manifests itself later, and it means you have to change your risk management approach to managing these networks to one of tolerance and resilience in the face of an adversary and in the face of an attack. Yes, again, it's the simple answer. At one level, intrusion prevention systems use signature-based technology. It's a technology that's 20 years old. It's based on an understanding of an attack, being able to encode that attack somehow so as to recognize the pattern. But what we're dealing with is complex attacks engineered to avoid detection. So what we need are more sophisticated decision support systems that have a better understanding of how protocols work, both at the low level and at the high level, so they can extract the data, analyze the data, and identify the evasion technique.